People fall in love every day, huh? Is that what you said? Yeah? Well, that's a crock. It doesn't work that way. Look, do you realize how happy you were with her? That is, of course, when you weren't driving yourself crazy. Every day? Come on. Some people will never be that happy. I'll never be that happy. What am I talking to you for? You don't know anything. Oof. That and that splash. <laughs> splash. <laughs> I was gonna make a joke. I was like, and now we're reviewing uh, uh, the Shit's Creek prequel. That's right, the Johnny Rose is... prequel that I yeah. never knew I needed. Uh uh-uh, uh, splash. <laughs> yeah, so I think that's a good way to, to start this uh, yeah, episode off. Uh, yeah, splash. Hey guys, I'm Nick. I'm Hunter. And welcome to NYC Actors Talk Film, where we go through famous actors' filmographies and their most prolific work yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> yes that is what that is what we do and we're doing uh this mini series is on john candy that's right uh, john candy baby the last episode that we did or in the first episode that we did was on stripes with bill murray and john candy and that whole crew so if you haven't listened to that go listen to that first and then yeah. come back but you know what while you're here you know what just save it stay here yeah. Uh, uh, dive in with us <laughs> dive in with us and make a splash oh man while we talk oh. about splash uh the uh 1984 uh hit movie by the way a uh, huge movie ron howard directed this movie uh he he's well known for a bunch of movies like the grinch stole christmas jim carrey i know dude so <laughs> i i think i have a beef with ron howard or something like that oh shit i okay. lo- i want to like him but like like the only movie that he directed that he kind of didn't oh direct... let's not forget yeah oh uh, you're you're gonna say it i think i think yeah, 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 yeah. solo yeah solo yeah. a movie and that he kind of directed and that's the movie that i like of his the most which is we i know that that's an unpopular but i I mean, granted, I he did so he did direct like a good chunk of it, I think, because I, Phil, if you if you remember, Phil Lord and Chris Miller mm-hmm. uh, were directors at first for Solo, and they they filmed like a bunch of stuff. Kathleen Kennedy and everyone mm-hmm. uh, at Lucasfilm were like, no, uh, like Lord, <laughs> Lawrence Lawrence Kasdan, the writer, like this is not Star Wars, this is a farce. Uh, the Farce Awakens, um, but yeah, like they weren't liking it, so they they were let go, and then Ron and blah, 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 then Ron Howard came in and uh, and directed it. So which I feel like he's like th- this movie kind of surprised me that it's by him because I feel like he's such a like a cookie cutter director. You know what I mean? Like of course he, you bring yeah, in Ron safe. Howard. Yeah, of course you bring in Ron Howard when like something goes wrong and like to make like the cookie cutter like good movie you know what i mean yeah definitely a safe choice oh he directed recently a hillbilly elegy i don't know if you've seen that one i haven't yet no no no. i've heard pretty bad things about it oh um, really but yeah he, he directed like rush apollo 13 da vinci code so obviously very well known mm-hmm. uh director um and yeah that, as i was saying yeah like this was a huge movie at the time uh, this was a Touchstone Picture movie, so technically kind of a Disney movie. Which is, I, th- I think I read that it's the first Touchstone Picture movie that Disney oh, really? created. Yeah, I think they like created it to have like more adult, adultish like themed content. Yeah, so, I mean that was the that was kind of the purpose of Touchstone in general. Like, yeah. okay, we can do like R rated or PG thirteen movies under this banner. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, so like yeah, Tom Hanks starring lovable. Always, always, you know, reliable. Oh, <laughs> old, yeah. old reliable, old, old Tom reliable. Hanks. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, and and who and who's the girl again? Uh, uh, Daryl Hannah. I I think her name is. I have I have it written down. In Daryl Hannah. Second. Okay. Well, she plays the infamous mermaid. Yes, Daryl Hannah. Uh, and uh, you know, she in in, in more ways than right. one makes a splash. Dude. In, in this movie, Dude. Dude, because you know, uh, Splash is the <laughs> name of the movie. movie. I, don't know where, I don't know where I'm going with this. Um, any, yeah, Daryl Hannah. I, I would the, throughout the whole movie. I'm just gonna get into my hot takes right now. Throughout the whole movie, I was like, why didn't they cast someone else? 
Ooh. I know this is a hot take, and it's probably I I don't mean to, because I I know she's in Blade Runner, and I I didn't mind her in that. Like she's in Blade, like the OG Blade is. Runner. Yeah, 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 yeah. Not oh. as like a big part or anything, but like oh, like you wouldn't even be able to tell that it was her. I had to yeah, look because I was wondering, like yeah, like wh- where have I seen her in? Yeah, Blade Runner. I think is the only thing that like I re- I recognized her in. Yeah, because like, I don't. I haven't. I I haven't. I don't recognize her from anything else. Yeah, and I was like, I mean, maybe she's good elsewhere. You know what I mean? But like right. in this movie, I wasn't buying that she was a mermaid. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's a fairly. I don't think it's a that hard thing to do. Mm-hmm. I don't know. What do you think? Of her performance, anyway. Yeah, I think she's like I don't know, I I I I kind of just want to get into our, our thoughts and feelings on, on yeah, the movie let's, first. Let's I do think. It. Let's do, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Let's do that first. Um, so, um, John Candy's in the movie. <laughs> um, yes. John Candy. This is a John Candy podcast. Um, uh, so this was right after Stripes. We're 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 doing you know, these movies in order now, uh, you know, in his career. So, yeah, like, Stripes was, like, the big breakout movie for him. You know, he he's not quite, like, leading man star, but, like, he is, like, this kind of, like, oh, he's a, he's a really cool, really good character actor. You know, he can play all these funny roles. So, you, you know, he, you know, still kind of small roles, but he gets cast more and more often at this point. And so, yeah, he plays the, the big brother, of, of Tom Hanks in this movie, Freddy. Uh, mm-hmm. And uh, what I did find interesting right off the bat in the movie is that in the opening credits, just like Stripes, when it says John Candy as Ox, it says in the beginning, John Candy as Freddy. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, that is, that is yeah. interesting. Yeah, it's interesting. Like, like you know, already he's like, I don't know, the the movie's already like letting you know, like, yeah, like he's he's going to play these, like, larger than life characters you know mm-hmm. like yeah like he's it's not just john candy he's playing this character like we want you to know that like you know he's like that good like yeah he's like you know he's gonna really like bring the house down like yeah john candy's in this movie yeah and bring the house down he does yeah i, think, I mean I, I i definitely want to get into it but but first before we get into the movie and his performance in it uh yeah give me your hot takes hunter uh what what you think of this movie <laughs> okay so about like right when the mermaid entered i had a feeling of how this movie was gonna go and mermaid flicks are not my favorite like i couldn't you know what i mean every single time i see a mermaid movie i don't really like it you know uh not my favorite like folk tale mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> um so so you like you like unicorns unic <laughs> why, why don't you go chase a unicorn Oh, that's right. He said that guy <laughs> says that in the movie. <laughs> um, ha, ha, ha. Um, but I wrote a lot, like a a log line that I was like, "Oh, this is a mermaid movie that works best without the mermaid." And then somewhere in like the midpoint, I almost didn't feel that way. It had some like interesting takes, like, but I I think I still feel that way. I, I uh, Tom Hanks and John Candy have undeniable chemistry that I really was into, and I wish that I saw more of it. Uh, cause like in the first like 15 minutes or so, like they're like riffing off each other and like doing these like brotherly stuff. And it was really fun to watch. And then all of a sudden, like it starts to focus on the mermaid, which is fine. That's what the movie's about. But yeah, I don't know. I, I still don't know what I think about it. I, I liked where it ended up. I liked some of the lines in it, like the monologue that, that you did, uh, to start off the show. I, I liked that part, but I think Tom Hanks and John Candy are where this movie, uh, like, really hits. Yeah. Um, interesting. Yeah. So basically what you're saying is, like, yeah, cut the mermaid. You know, like, like you don't really need the mermaid in the movie. Basically. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I there were a couple things I liked about this movie. But overall, I thought it was pretty terrible. Uh, I <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't see I, I I don't think that I'd uh, I'd go that far but I'm 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 intrigued. Yeah, I kind of hated it. Uh, I no, not kind of. I did hate this movie. Mm-hmm. Um, I I I thought it was extremely dated. Uh, I I thought especially when it came to the romance stuff, I thought that was so like one note and underdeveloped. And I felt like well, it is like the the crux of the movie is this relationship. You know, with, with Tom Hanks and this this Mergal, 
uh, but but I never bought it. I never liked them together. I I thought Tom Hanks as likable as as he usually is in movies. I thought he was very unlikable in this, and I thought he was very. Uh, he's very shallow in this movie. The character's very shallow and one note and kind of just unlikable and didn't sit right with me. Um, I do like the scenes with him and John Candy, but as you said, there's, they're few and far between. Uh, and yeah, I think John Candy is good in this movie. He's, I think, by far the, the best part of it. Uh, he has like, yeah, the best lines, the best delivery of the lines. And, and once again, just kind of like we were saying before with Stripes, you know, like you would just see him in the background, you know, just in character, you know, either listening or doing like an interesting choice, looking around, you know, just being in the space, being this character fully, you know. And, and once again, that I, I really do think that's why, like, you know, his fame, you know, or his stardom just got bigger and bigger. Because, yeah, like, he really was just, like, this larger-than-life force, you know, in, in these movies. And and I think that's why they, they always have to be like, yeah, John Candy's in this, and he's playing this character. You know, it's so specific like that. Um, so I think he's good in the movie. Uh, yeah, it, was, it, it just didn't make me laugh. It's supposed to be a comedy, and I didn't laugh, like, basically the whole time. I mean, there's a few, a few lines from John Candy that I liked, but I think it was mostly because of... The delivery, less mm-hmm. the actual line. I think just the way John Candy says the line is kind of funny, and I I definitely have a feeling like he was improvising a lot. So like you know maybe like the stuff that he made up or that he kind of conjured up, like that was the funny stuff. You know what I mean? That wasn't you mm-hmm. know it wasn't really the movie per se. Um, but yeah, I, I the plot was all over the place, and yeah, I kind of hated it. But we'll we'll get we'll dive deep and in, into it more. Interesting. Um... So, uh, was like the writing not like funny to you or like, no, was it for you? Oh, uh, I, I, I laughed a few times. Yeah, I did. Um, and it's interesting. Here's a, here's a Ron Howard fun fact, uh, that I'm 99% sure that this movie got nominated for an Oscar for its screenplay, which I, fuck? which I was, I was surprised to read that too. I was like, this isn't that good must have been a uh, slow year <laughs> um but yeah and uh usually with tom hanks younger tom hanks and i think this was his second movie bachelor party that came out the same year as splash okay uh, and i think that might have been his first big movie okay so yeah like but usually with um like younger tom H- or younger tom hanks movies i'm not like the biggest fan you know, like I, I, you would, you would say you're not the biggest fan <laughs> of early Tom Hanks. No, <laughs> except for, I mean, I, I like big, I like, but like as far as far as like the, the like where he goes to the volcano or whatever that movie is, I forget. I watched. Oh that yeah, movie. Joe versus the volcano. Yes, yeah. Like when I watch Tom Hanks movies, I'm not like younger Tom Hanks movies. I'm not like, oh, I'm gonna really like this. You know? Yeah, I think I'm kind of that way too. And this is not a Tom Hanks podcast, but I think it is interesting to bring up just because you know he's a, he is mm-hmm. the main character of the movie. It's uh, and everything. So, yeah, yeah, I mean, I mean, you know, maybe in the future we'll get into it more someday. But yeah, it is. I I think I'm I have to agree with you because yeah, early Tom Hanks was, you know, you know he was like ro- romantic lead, you know, kind of mm-hmm. funny, but like it, mostly in these like rom com movies. Or, yeah, or and, you know, romantic movies and everything. Yeah, something that I that I thought I was like, man, like watching Tom Hanks like looking and finding love for some reason is like the most wonderful thing I've ever seen in my life. And I I think as much as I didn't like the mermaid aspect or Daryl Hannah like really, um, <laughs> I I liked watching him experience the situation. Yeah, he's you know. very talented. He's yeah. you know he's one of the best actors that we have right now. Uh, yeah, uh, absolutely. And uh, yeah, I mean, there's something so specific about Tom Hanks that that we love about him. But I just don't think that's in this movie. I I love Tom Hanks usually. I really do. Even you know I haven't seen a lot of his early work, but I yeah I remember liking Big. But I feel like if I watch that again, I feel like I would be like yeah, he dated. Mm-hmm. He's you know because isn't mm-hmm. isn't there that scene where he has sex with the girl? But like you know, he's a little boy brain. He has a little oh, boy yeah. brain. <laughs> it's like it's, it's like old. <laughs> it's 
It's oh my god. <laughs> Except no beach. <laughs> yeah, cut the beach. <laughs> we, but we got old. Yeah, uh, but we got old. <laughs> um, but like, but but I do agree with you that yeah, Tom Hanks is one of our finest actors, and that yeah, he. What we love about Tom Hanks is that he's so likable and that he's kind of an everyman and that we can kind of see ourselves through him. And, and that's why we love him, I think. But, yeah, I think it, I think it's just the way he was written in this movie that, that rubbed me the wrong way. I was just like, yeah, he's just, like, unlikable. Uh, and, like, I don't know. Like, he's just kind of all over the place. Because in the beginning of the movie, he's like, oh, why, you know, I, I'm never going to love anybody. Why can't I love anybody? And then he meets this girl, and he's, like, head over heels and wants to marry her, like, after two days and gets kind of pissed off immediately when she says no in this really toxic way where he's like, fine, then I'm not going to fucking talk to you. And she's like, okay, fine, I'll marry you. Okay, great. Yeah, we're going to get married tonight. We're going to do this and that. And it's like, what the mm. fuck is... This is our main character. It's, like, just so, like, I don't... I'm not rooting for you. I don't care about anything that you do. I don't care about the relationship with this girl, uh, this mermaid. Uh, and, and yeah, I, I just didn't like it. <laughs> yeah, that's that's interesting. I, I will say when I laughed, not because it was, like, funny, but because it was, like, what a weird thing to say when he was all, like, he, like, grabbed her and he was all, like, uh, uh we're going to get married tomorrow because I'm not losing you again. <laughs> it's, like, it's just so oh, aggressive. Wow. And so like, yee, like this yeah. was like, so it's so dated in that way. Cause like, yeah, like in these eighties rom-com movies, yeah. Like the guy's kind of a dick and they learn their lesson, like, uh, you know, in the 11th hour. And that's what happens here, but it doesn't feel earned and it doesn't feel like I would ever like, I don't know. I just don't like this guy. I just don't like, you know, this character and and everything. And yeah, even though, yeah, he does kind of change his mind at the end. He's like, okay, I'll, you know, because at first he's like, you're a mermaid. Uh, get, the, get away from me. That too. It's like, okay, but you love this woman. And now that this happened, yeah, this, this is a crazy thing that happened. But like, now you're just like totally against it. Like, now you're not even going to give it any thought. And then... I don't know. We have one scene, and now he's like, "Okay, I love you again. I love you." But it, yeah. it, it's just like, I yeah, it, it's just all over the place from a, a story and character standpoint. I I couldn't help but to think that this was like, it's kind of like the shape of water. <laughs> I was like, this is like a family like shape of water, <laughs> isn't it? A little bit. A little I bit, guess, I guess. It's like has the same thing. Like, oh, yeah. falls in love with like a sea creature. And it's like yeah, less good, but yeah. But but in in like the shape of water, it does it like, oh, I don't know. It does it in a better like. Well, shape of water way. is beautiful. I mean, like it's, it's such a film. weird concept. Like, oh, what if a woman fell in love with a sea monster? And that sounds insane, but like they play it straight and they play it with. It, it, it's just it, it's just uh, executed with empathy and and mm -hmm. and, uh, and it's so delicate and and so monumental their relationship that like you you totally root for them and that's why that movie works so much because yeah the same kind of plot beats happen where it's like yeah whoa a monster who are you oh I love you and then there's like the outside forces that want to you know take it away or kill it or, or experiment on it it's like no give us the monster no we gotta run we gotta run over mm -hmm. here oh i gotta let you go you know those 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 kind of plot beats are definitely in this movie um but yeah but it's all about execution and i think exactly. splash, splash uh dips in quality it's, it's nothing but a splash the shape of water is the whole it's just it's the whole water. This movie's just nothing but a splash. It's just time. a splash of water. It's just a little yeah. splash on your face, splash. and then, and then it's gone. over. And yep. then it's over. And then it's gone. <laughs> uh, yeah. But but yeah, uh, let's let's kind of start from the beginning, just to uh, yeah, because just to just to remember yeah. what the hell happened in this L movie. Little boy dropping coins, looking up skirts. That's what I mean. Really dated stuff like that. Saying that, I I will say um uh. Because we talked about stripes being a, a bit dated, uh, this movie I didn't. Other than like like little stuff like that, where it's like, oh, like if you go look at like the Sandlot or something like that, there's like boys doing like stupid stuff. You know what I mean? But it's like, but as far as like really dated stuff, I was like, oh, you this movie could like definitely be made today. You know what I mean? Which you don't get that in a lot of uh, '80s comedies. Like yeah, this. I think. 
I really like the Sandlot, and I and I think maybe it just works more because we actually get to like I don't know live with these these kids. That sounded mm-hmm. weird. Uh, you know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. No, 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 you you do though. You get to like you get to know them a little, like. Yeah. Then... So you know, because yeah, that's that is like kid behavior. It's, mm-hmm. it's silly stuff like that. But like, yeah, I I don't know. We're we're kind of just like starting the movie with that, and it's like. Am I laughing at this? What am I doing right now? What do you want me to do, movie? Do you want because uh-huh. there there were like a couple of, of 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 points in this movie. There were like a few scenes where I was like, "Am I supposed to be laughing at this?" Like, oh yeah, guys, I'm I'm on the floor laughing right now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. no, you guys got me. Yeah, and I'm I'm just like standing there, like, okay, am I supposed to yeah. be rolling on the floor with laughter? Because in the '80s. Because I was watching with my folks who lived mm-hmm. through the 80s. They were like, yeah, this used to be hilarious. Like, we would be cracking up right now at this point. At oh, this man. part. But, you know, now, through a 2021 lens, like, none of us were laughing. Yeah. Yeah. And then and then it goes to Tom Hanks as the, uh, the boy that plays Alan. I think that's his name, Alan. Uh, yeah. Before. And he... And it's funny, because later in the movie, t- Tom Hanks describes it as an accident... Bro, this boy just jumps into the water. He just literally like he freaks. Yeah, he, it wasn't like, even no, an accident. They they no, talk it about it like it was an accident, but he he just jumps. Yeah, he jumps, and I, I, it's like he's trying to like kill himself because he doesn't know how to swim, and then and then he's trying to end it all. And then the the there's no which I don't expect Ron Howard. I mean, I haven't. I'm not well versed in a bunch of Ron Howard movies, right? But you're not well versed in the Howard verse. Yeah, in the Howard verse, um, but so I don't expect him to really play like the the like mysticism of like the first meeting between him and the the mermaid like have like this awe and like wonder and there but there really is none. It's like oh this girl, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's- I didn't feel like 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 throughout the movie, I just didn't really feel all that much, you know. And I should be feeling like you know this kind of rush of emotions. Uh, and everything, you know, um, and yeah, like, you know, it, it should feel like, yeah, like really romanticized and larger than life, but instead it just feels like, I don't know, just like an 80s comedy, I don't know. Yeah, and it's like, I, I couldn't help but to wonder, like, oh man, if like Spielberg got his hands on this, like, what would this, just this one scene, what would it look like, you know? Well, one, because- he would put a shark in it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> actually actually in splash uh he would he would do, he would pull a, a jaws and you wouldn't see the mermaid until the very end Ooh, ooh, i like it see that might be better yeah because actually okay and this is all just like what if we made this movie kind of thing but like what if it was like you don't know if he's like crazy or not until the end you just made a better splash like, like he's just like talking about, yeah, I met this mermaid, and like it's really all about like his relationship with everyone else and how they react to it, and that's how we can get more scenes with John Candy and Tom Hanks. Dude, dude, that would be perfect. And then like he meets this girl or whatever and goes on a few dates and like doesn't know until right at the end, right? Oh, right, and she's the so mermaid. Good. Dude, that would be so. And the, and the twist would drop everybody like on their heads it'd flip them upside down the audience would believe in love at the end it, it, it would just be amazing and split and in, in Spl- we're making a remake of splash guys dude instead there, if you go on wikipedia and you type in splash right the movie or whatever and it, there's this little thing in parentheses that says the splash verse and if you click on it there's a bunch of sequels that's right i i, I looked this up yesterday there's a sequel called and i shit you not splash comma Two T O O. Yeah, and did you read what it was about? <laughs> no, no, no. What? Dude, so they come back because spoiler alert, but they come back from the ocean, and he like tries to save his business, and she tries to save like a dolphin. Okay. Which is totally ruins the the like point of the ending. Of right, movie. and we'll get to that. But yeah, they yeah they just like yeah they just like swim away together at the end, right? So. Yes. So why would they come back? Well, I'm I'm very confused about the ending too, but we'll get there. But yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah. so anyway, uh, uh, Splash remake, twenty thirty one. Dude. Oh well. I also read that they that uh, Channing Tatum was working on remaking this movie. I don't. Is, it's probably would not he be happen. the merman? Like, I is it a is it a flip? 
I think so, but I'm I'm not sure. Um, but also like this was back in like 2016, and in 2019 they said that they were in like still in uh, like yeah. So it's probably yeah, just not cut gonna it. happen. Just cut it. The, yeah, the, just, we don't need a splash. Anything. Yeah, just put it on the We show. don't need another installment in the splash verse. No, we, uh, <laughs> we 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 really do not. Uh, uh, just let it go, guys. Let it go. Yeah, let it uh, go. they won't. <laughs> they won't let it go. No, they'll. Well, and but about, but we'll be the ones to make the next splash movie. Yes, boom. And we already That's have the next splash have, installment. We already have the idea, so uh, exactly, we're good. Um, Disney, call us up. Yeah, call us up. We'll have a little chat. Uh, so, yeah, uh, yeah. So all that stuff with him as a kid happens. He meets a mermaid, but you know, the parents are like, "What are you talking about? What, what happened?" You know, they don't believe him. So we cut to like what, like twenty or so years later. Um, oh no, and- no, 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 no. Oh. They- uh, I want you to know, I I laughed, I chuckled at this when it said, "Oh yes, oh yes, say it, say it, say it." New, it. New York City, this morning. Okay, and Dude. and just so you know, when I watched it with my when I watched it, I was like, "Oh, this morning." Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like the, the, the right now. Oh, it's happening right now. They just got a camera. <laughs> this, this movie's happening right, right now. <laughs> I was like, dude, I've never seen a movie do that. Like, yeah, that that was pretty unique. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, okay. just just say present day, dude. Yeah, not Jesus. like this, so this morning. This it's like or, uh, oh, this uh, this evening. It's like what? Just say yeah, like this morning, seven fifty eight a.m. Like, <laughs> get out of here. It's so weird. Um, so yeah, so we cut to Tom Hanks, and yeah, he works at like what, like a, a fruit. Store? Yeah, they, they like they they supply produce to like different um, uh, grocery stores. Right, and and so like you know he's stressed he's stressing out about that. John Candy comes in with the cool car. He crashes in, and he messes up all the fruits. And he enters, and once again, I do like him in this movie. He's barely in it, uh, I know. but but you know there's like a good hour, maybe even more, where he's just not in the movie, but. But I do like him when he's on, uh, and and I like how and people have said this too. But I like how he's kind of a no, he is he's a playboy in this. Like he he's kind of like a ladies' man, and you know he's wearing you know these cool clothes and just being like a totally loosey goosey fun guy, and that's not something you see a lot in movies like this. You know. Uh, uh, you know, John Candy movies or, or just movies in general with like, you know, bigger guys, you know, funny mm-hmm. guys. The, those those big funny guys aren't usually like, I don't know, the, the playboys. Yeah, it's interesting. I uh, I looked up who else was like looked at for this role. It was weird. It was John Goodman and then Tim Allen also was... And I was like, bro, if Tim <laughs> Allen, if Tim Allen played this, Yo. I'd be so so weird. Also, it would have been Toy Story 0.5. <laughs> Literally, right? And I was like, what a weird like John, you got John Candy or you got Tim Allen. It's like what a weird like two people to <laughs> I know, but I'm with. but it was a I think it was a good casting choice though, because once again it, it's a you know, it's not something you see a lot, and I thought it was unique in that respect yeah. like it was like yeah like you know the ladies love him he's he's a he's a lover he's a he's a lover <laughs> you know yeah it, it, it's just a playing against type and i like that yeah um and then we start off also where tom hanks apparently his girlfriend leaves him right because he says he can't say i love you to her yeah yeah it was so funny oh my gosh when he's on the phone and he's like <laughs> he's like do i love you well uh, you moved in, right? You moved in. And then when he's all like, oh, well, how about this? Do you love me? And then you don't hear her response. And then he goes, well, there you go. <laughs> so, like, did, I think she said yes. <laughs> like, uh, Oh, shit. You're probably right. But, yeah, I so I'm watching the beginning of this and I'm thinking, oh, okay, that's kind of, I think, his arc is like, okay, like, he's by the end of the movie, like, you know, he'll f- find a way to say I love you to this mermaid or you know or that he'll find a way to open up more and and be more empathetic or whatever that does not happen in this movie i mean he does say i love you but he says it like maybe halfway through the movie yeah Yeah. so it's not an arc uh he doesn't it's not a character arc in any way it doesn't it's not like an earned moment it's not like a oh we're building up to this kind of moment 
for him. It's just kind of like, oh, he says I love you to this girl. We'll get into it, though. So, yeah, like, yeah, um, we, we have a couple of these scenes where Tom Hanks is like, oh, you know, I can't love anybody. What's wrong with me? He goes to Cape Cod. Uh, he meets up with this guy with the boat. He drowns. M- Mermaid <laughs> saves him. And did, have you heard about this Disney Plus uh, I, controversy? Yes. So yes, yeah. uh, there's a scene where, at least in the original cut, uh, the mermaid, uh, you know, uh, is naked, and she, you know, she leaves the ocean to to like you know put him down or whatever on the beach, and like you know you you see her ass cheeks, um, but uh, sorry I should say her butt cheeks. <laughs> I want to be respectable. Uh, so you see her butt cheeks, and uh, in the original cut, but because it's on Disney Plus. They can show murder. They could show, you know, um, you know, aliens, robots, or people like you know dying. But like five seconds of butt cheeks—that's way too much. That's way too. Yeah, funny. they they have lost now on Disney Plus, but and so you can have all of those themes, but butt cheeks, no. Which way. I f- I find kind of funny on both sides, where it's like. Yeah, it's it's really strange that they would just like censor like a five second moment. It's not even like that great. It's just a butt. You know what I mean? It's not. Oh. It's not even like I don't know, like something more crazy like that. It's just, one. It's just a butt. But I I can also find it funny on the other side that people complain so much about a five second scene. <laughs> yeah, right. And they did. They don't do it well either. Because before I no. even read that, I when she like runs away and, and you're supposed to see it, right? Like, I was like, there's something wrong. There's something wrong there. Right, because, like, her hair is so long, and, like, it, it's, like, CGI? Yeah, it's, like, the, the CGI, like, extensions on, like, the... <laughs> and it's, like, that... It just looks wrong, you guys... Yeah, so even even if you didn't hear about that, you'd be like, wait, that's a little weird. Oh, yeah. It's a little off. Oh, no, literally, because I, I, I didn't read about it until afterward. And so it's, like, so... Uh, what are you doing? Like, I can see yeah. that it's supposed to be there. So I find it funny all around, I think. Like, it's weird that oh, they yeah. did it, but I also find it funny that people complain so much about <laughs> that. You know, it's just like, who yeah. cares anymore? I really exactly. don't care. It's Splash, yeah. guys. It's Splash. Uh, but also, who's, who's, I mean, I don't want to say it, but who's watching the movie? Who's is watching the movie so much? You know what I mean? It's yeah. like, I, I hadn't heard of this movie, I'm going to be honest, until uh, you put it on the list. Which is surprising just because it, it is like a well-known movie. It's popular and, and once again, what's huge back in the day. Not that popular, I guess. If I, I guess. <laughs> if it wasn't that popular for a hunter, it wasn't that popular. Mm-hmm. Yep. If I haven't heard of it, is it really popular? Mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't freaking think so. But yeah, so I found that funny. So yeah, like so Tom Hanks meets up with, you know, with, with, with the mermaid. He's like, whoa. Um, he goes back to New York, the mermaid's there naked, you know, he, she was following him. Eugene Levy's here, the Johnny Rose prequel that I never knew I needed. Uh, <laughs> uh, but, you know, he, he plays, as we kind of mentioned before, like this kind of anti- antagonistic force that wants the mermaid, you know, that's like, you know, give us the mermaid, you know, I for experiments or whatever, or, or you know, like I, I want to prove to these other scientists that I'm not crazy, give me the mermaid, you know, whatever. Um, I, I love Eugene Levy. I think he's a comedic force. I think he's great in movies like Waiting for Guffman, uh, Schitt's Creek, he's wonderful in. But in this, they just don't use him that well. And I, and I just don't think this is the right role for him. I think he's great usually but i just i i just think it's the role yeah i honestly i think you cut out the role i think you don't need it you know what i mean yeah, i mean so like much... just cut out all the stuff with like the scientists and everything like i get oh, that yeah. you need like an antagonistic force to like come in and be like no we want the mermaid you can't be in love with this mermaid that you know give, give us the mermaid but like i don't know i i feel like there there are more than a couple of scenes with Eugene Levy and those two dumb guys he's with. And it's just like, yeah, this is just so like, whatever. This is just table setting and it's just like boring and it's not really, there's no like forward momentum really besides the fact that he's looking for the mermaid. That's really yeah. about it. And it's, it's, it's honestly detrimental to the film too. Cause it's like the last 30 minutes is about that is about that whole plot right there. Right. And, and that's like, like the worst part of the movie I think is the last 30 minutes. Oh, I w- I was so, I didn't care. I was yeah. like, 
I got the the arc. I got it. That yep. they fall in love, you know. I got right. it. Right. So so you would even say like cut the mermaid stuff, cut the scientist plot. Oh yeah. Yeah. So and that's, in fact, that's a good uh, half of your movie, Hunter. I, I know. Well, in, in fact, what I was thinking, I was like, man, Tom Hanks and John Candy, pretty sure this is their only film together. I looked it up. It is, right? Yeah. And and I was like, man, why can't can we just have like a Beverly Hills Cop almost themed movie with Tom Hanks and John Candy? Like, can they just be buddy cops? So that'd be that'd be brilliant. In fact, cut. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I was like, just cut the whole movie and See, have buddy make cop that out. relationship the movie. That's what I'm saying, dude. Oh, dude. you're crazy, dude! I, I, I can't. I, I, don't believe that mermaids exist. I don't think you're in love with a mermaid. You, you're crazy, Tom Hanks. Almost. No, believe me. I'm your. You know, you gotta trust me on this. You really do. You gotta trust me. All right. You know, like I'll, I, I trust you. I, I, I want to see this mermaid. You know what I mean? Like that's, dude. That should and be then, the movie. And then there's a scene on the boat where he goes looking for her and she doesn't show up. Right. And it's like, and it's this whole like thing where. Like Tom Hanks, he thinks that he's wrong now. He's like, right. hey, I was wrong. And then John Kenny's like, let's go back. Oh. Or, or, or even better, like it, like the mermaid. And this is just our splash fanfic now. <laughs> yeah, right. That'll never be. Uh, but yeah, like the what if like even the mermaid doesn't come? Tom Hanks is like, yeah, maybe I am crazy. I'm sorry. And John Candy, like through the journey of, of the whole movie, he's like, no, we'll, we can wait. Oh man. That's powerful stuff. You know? Dude, and maybe so maybe we'd never stuff. see the mermaid. But, like, you know that John Candy believes in him and that they'll wait as long as they they can to, to see this mermaid together. Yeah, this, this right now is making me tear up. <laughs> this right now is making me tear up. <laughs> you know, this, oh, but wow. this is like Nick Mana Art House version of Splash. Oh, dude. And then at the end, you kind of have a similar ending, but it means more. Exactly. Dude. Cause yeah, and we'll get into it now. I think. Cause yeah, like you know, so Tom Hanks and the and the mermaid meet up, and I yeah, I don't love her performance in the movie. I don't really think it's her fault per se. I think once again, I I really do think it's just the movie's fault, because yeah, she's underwritten, her character's confusing, and uh, oh, and by the way, in the beginning when we see her as an adult, and she's like going into like the the uh, run you know the ship or whatever underwater, I was mm -hmm. like. When did this come out? Was this before Little Mermaid? <laughs> was this before, was this um, after Little Mermaid? And it was before Little Mermaid. Yes. And I was like, oh shit. Touchstone, Disney. Disney stole this moment. <laughs> because because that's exactly how the Little Mermaid starts. That's how we introduce Ariel. Is that it's, like she's curious, she's you know, she's swimming about and she goes inside this, you know, rundown ship. It's uh uh it's interesting because uh, Ariel or whatever, she was supposed to. She was originally blonde. Oh, really? And then they changed it because of this movie. Yeah, I was gonna say that would have been just like a total yeah. like uh, rip off of Splash. Yeah. In fact, and also like, because I, I was, uh, uh, I think I was talking to my sister about this movie before uh, I saw it, and she I think really likes it, and I was like talking to her basically about Tom Hanks and how like he's so like a part of the culture. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, and dude, it's something about this movie that like, uh, they're walking on Madison Avenue and then, uh, she's like, Oh, Madison, like I'll be named Madison or, and he's all like, that's not a name. I was all like, what are you talking about? Yes, it is. And then I looked it up and it wasn't like a girl's like first name before this movie. And yeah. I was like, bro, what is it with Tom Hanks? Like movies where it's like, like, like Bubba Gump's right. It's like, bro, he has, a whole restaurant after and it's like so in the culture you know what i mean or like so part of the culture it's crazy it's a cultural it's a cultural reset baby <laughs> it literally is um but yeah like it's just the power of tom hanks it really is. it's cra it's kind of crazy it's like dude this is just tom hanks world and we're just like kind of living in it a little we bit we are man <laughs> uh but yeah so like she doesn't speak english uh at first which once again, wh why does that need to happen? Why can't she just speak English? Uh, uh, and so she learns it by watching TV for th like an hour, like a couple of hours at most. Like yeah, that's she, ridiculous. She was that's at Bloomingdale's. fucking ridiculous. She was at Bloomingdale's for six hours. Oh, and by the way, Bloomingdale's, Moscow on the Hudson. Re oh, uh, uh, it's all connected. Also, uh, a little. Uh, fun fact that I forgot up until now. Do you know who else was considered for this role? Mr. Robin Williams was considered <gasps> for this role. Oh, he would have been good. And uh, uh, 
the name is blanking on me. I'll just say Superman. What's his name? Oh, Christopher Reeve. Yes, was also considered for this role. Which I actually, when I heard that, I was like, you know what? I like that. I like no, that. I wouldn't have liked that because the character is still the character. Like it's he's still written as shallow and unlikable. So I don't think anyone would have done that right because Christopher Reeve is very likable. He was a very likable actor. Yeah. But like once again, just by the way the character was written, I, I feel like he would have to play it like it is on you know on the page. So like yeah. I don't think he would have saved it. What about Robin Williams? Same thing. I would have liked him in the role, but. <laughs> It's it's just all about the script, I think. You know what I mean? I I, it's no one's fault necessarily yeah. when it comes to I think all that. If and especially if Robin Williams and John Candy were in this movie, it would have been like, oh, then we really need to cut out a lot of this stuff. Cause oh yeah, like, there there would have been hours of footage that they just could not use. Dude, I don't even think they would have been able to film this movie. <laughs> And and the and the behind the scenes footage that we would have gotten from that would have been like out of this world. Oh, dude, it would have been out of this world. You know how there's like a rated R or maybe even like what is it NC seventeen cut of of Mrs. Doubtfire? Is there really? Yeah, there's either. Oh I think it's gosh. an R rated cut. It's like an R rated cut of Mrs. Doubtfire that's apparently out mm-hmm. there. Uh, it might be a rumor. It might not be true. But that's what like the internet was telling me at least. But like. There probably would have been one for this movie if Robin Williams oh, yeah. was in it. <laughs> Dude, like unreleasable stuff. Unreleasable. <laughs> Unacceptable <laughs> stuff. <laughs> but uh um but yeah, I just like but like she like so she she comes into this movie and she just starts making out with Tom Hanks and and he's just kind of like okay and like there's nothing really deeper there and it it, it, it from the start and I, I feel like kind of permeates throughout the whole movie. Like, he kind of just wants to make out with her. And he... God damn it. It's Tom Hanks calling. Yeah, Tom Hanks. He's me. like, you're wrong, Nick. You're wrong. <laughs> hey, Tom. You gonna stop talking about Splash? Okay. Yeah, I can... No. Hey. Hey, I love you. Can you say it back? That's what I thought. Sorry, it was a Nick, sorry. Yeah, Nick, mine, Tom. Nick, Nick. A lot of the times during this podcast, like I mean, we cut it out a lot, but he has to take business calls with, uh, like Tom Hanks calls, yeah, yeah, yeah. like you know, uh, uh, Shusha Ronan also calls. That's it's right. Uh, Linda crazy. Carter called me at one point. Yeah. Um. Still waiting just, on the just f- to talk about the post credit scene of Wonder Woman eighty four. Yeah. Just and still still waiting on the Florence Pugh call, but I hear that that's picking up a lot of steam. What are you talking about? Florence Pugh is my girlfriend. Of course she calls. Oh, me. you're right. <laughs> Come on, dude. Keep that's, up. See, no, 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 that was my bit to release it into the world. Now we all know. Oh, okay. Well, now we know. <laughs> now you all know. You're welcome. Uh-huh. When she shows up and, like, I just wants to, like, make out with Tom Hanks, right? I, I'm i watching this on my computer, and I I take my earphone out, and I, I tell Stephanie, I go, this mermaid shows up, and 20 minutes in, like, all she... All she hasn't said one word. All she wants to do is have sex with Tom Hanks, and I'm like, like kinda, us all. And I'm let's like, be real, like all oh, of no. us. Oh, dude, I'm like kind of peeved at the movie a little bit, and then she just goes, <laughs> "Who wouldn't want to have sex with Tom Hanks?" And I was, uh, and I was like, "True, true." And then I, I start watching the movie, and then I, I'm more into it than ever. I'm like, well, maybe this is based in fact. Yeah. I was like, this of is course. actually it's factually actually a fact. Yeah, actually factually an actual fact, right? Actually yeah. factually an actual fact. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so it, 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 so once again, already rubbing me the wrong way. I'm just like, so there's nothing deeper there. They just want to fuck. Uh, and and so like you know, uh, Tom Hanks was talking all about like I want to make a real connection. I want love. And then this happens, and he's just like, okay, uh, I just want to make out with you. Um, and so, yeah, we, we, we cut back and forth with, like, these scenes between them, and then, then we have Eugene Levy scientist stuff, and a couple of scenes with John Candy, they're playing tennis, and they're talking about, like, oh, you're really in love with this girl, are you? And he's like, I don't know. And he's like, oh, no, you gotta admit it. And then, like, they're, they're playing tennis, and then the ball, you know, they're, they're playing, like, a... 
yeah, it's tennis, right? Or is it uh, tennis? It's a uh, uh, I forget the actual name for it. It's like wall tennis. I don't know. They're yeah, well, tennis. we'll call it wall uh, tennis. Oh, oh, it's a uh, uh, racquetball, I think. Racquetball. So anyway, like, so the ball hits the wall and then it hits his face and he falls down because he's big. Ha ha! It's funny because he's big. One take, baby. One take, dude. I looked it up because I was like. How many takes did it take him to do this? And it was one. And also, do you know what happened right before that? And that this was the actual Ron Howard fun fact right here. This was the fun fact. That lay it I on liked. me. Lay it on me. So he showed up late that day, right? And Ron Howard, he was like, usually John Candy's like great to work with. He's always on time. Like, And then so he shows up and he's like, I'm so sorry I'm late. I'm so sorry. All right, I have to tell you, I'm drunk. I'm drunk right now. I'm drunk, but listen, listen, I'm not making this up. I was at the bar last night drinking with Jack Nicholson. <laughs> and and I kept being like, no, I got to go home. Like, I shoot tomorrow. And Jack Nicholson goes, you'll be all right, kid. <laughs> <laughs> and then and he's all like, I never went to bed. I just showed up right now. <laughs> and then he goes and does that. Oh. God, that's amazing yeah. isn't that the best story ever <laughs> that's incredible you know he he john candy was very well known for his uh crazy nights out with celebrities like jack nicholson like uh, john belushi and everybody mm -hmm. uh yeah i mean i th you know that was kind of like his you know downfall in a lot of ways oh, like yeah. you know partying a little too hard but but that is an incredible story but an incredible story like incredible. And I I just, I just imagine Robin Williams going, "Okay, Sparky, here's the deal." <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, dude, <laughs> so iconic. Oh, dude. Uh, so yeah, so we're we're cutting back and forth between these scenes. Mm -hmm. uh, there's like a president lunch thing. Like, what is that? Yeah, they're meeting the like. I don't know how that it happens, but like, so they're at this like banquet hall thing, and the president's there. And it's not Ronald Reagan, and uh, and <laughs> <laughs> it's Mike Pence, uh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I, I'm I'm trying to look for the fly on his head. It's not there. It's not Ronald Reagan. It's Mike Pence. <laughs> <laughs> it really did look like Mike Pence. It really did That's look like Mike Pence. I, uh, uh, but yeah, so <laughs> Mike Pence uh, says thanks, and. Uh, <laughs> Um, and, uh, and so, like, Eugene Levy's there, everyone's there, um, before that, there, uh, Tom Hanks and the Mermaid, what's, fuck, what's her fucking name? Madison. Well, I'll just say Madison. Um, uh, Madison, they're, they're, I, uh, you know, they're ice skating. He asks her to marry him, and she's like, no, and he's like, mm -hmm. and then, and then she's like, okay, fine. Uh, <laughs> So great relationship, mm -hmm. not shallow at all, not, not toxic, toxic, not, not toxic. Yeah. No. Um, and so yeah, so now they and, and so you know yeah, banquet hall, Jean Levy's there, gets a hose, more or less hoses her down. She has a fin, she's a mermaid. Uh, it's it's very sad for everyone involved. Oh yeah, it's it's terrible. Especially, and also after that, Eugene Levy is out of, doesn't go to prison. No, I mean, his crime was really just spraying water on a girl. I mean, yeah. I mean, I guess you're right, but I, I just thought like... Also, it was for science. Science. And also still not respected in the field. That guy yeah, was even though like, oh, like he did find like a fucking mermaid yeah, right? for them. I know, and then the guy's like, how about you go find another, uh, a unicorn or something like that? He should have been like, okay, I will. I'll prove you wrong again. Yeah, and oh, <laughs> but actually he was like, no, those actually don't exist. I've tried. <laughs> I've tried. Years Look, before, mermaids exist, but unicorns, that's way too far. Oh, you know what? Maybe that line does make sense. Maybe, like, years before, like, this moment in time, that's what he focuses research on. He was trying to find unicorns, couldn't do it. And then all of a sudden, by luck, he found a mermaid. Boom. There we go. There we go. I, made that, I made that line make sense. You're welcome, Ron Howard. We need a prequel. Um, yeah. <laughs> just Eugene Levy. Um, <laughs> like now. Yeah. It's a prequel, but he looks like he does right now. <laughs> yeah, perfect. Um, uh, so, yeah. Um, so, yeah, they, get, they, 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 they take the mermaid away. She's being experimented on. 
and also Tom Hanks is being experimented on. Because, which didn't make sense. Because it's like, dude, you definitely have his like passport and birth certificate, and like, you know that he's not a, a mermaid. Like, where I mean, the answer is going to be yes. What I what I say about this, but like, was did we need a scene where we we saw Tom Hanks basically naked? The answer is yes, but but also. Yeah, it was just I I didn't understand the purpose of any of those scenes. But and also like all right, so Disney Plus you you're going to blur out the butt cheeks. But Tom Hanks literally holding his hands over his Hunter, genitals. It's Tom Hanks. Is okay? It's Tom Hanks. It's the patriarchy, Nick. Yeah, it's <laughs> We that. have to dismantle. We got it. We have to. We have to dismantle. In fact, we are no longer NYC actors talk film. We are NYC actors dismantling the patriarchy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Look, accountability needs to happen, guys. It does. And you know what? It starts with 1984's Ron <laughs> Howard splash. It, it, it has to start with that five second clip of, 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 a, of butt cheeks. <laughs> In splash. So, um... So yeah, we get as as we kind of mentioned before. Yeah, we have these scenes where he's like, "You're a mermaid. I'm out of here." Uh, he meets up with John Candy, and he also the whole the, this happens the whole movie. But like, New York is so small in this movie. Uh, like, yes. people, like the the our three main characters are like so close to each other constantly. Like, like it it makes no sense that like Eugene Levy just happens to find them both like. I don't know, two, three times throughout the whole movie. It's just like that makes no sense. Um, when, when the uh, when Madison like is like running away from Tom Hanks, and Tom Hanks is trying to look for her near the end, she's like right there. She's mm-hmm. like she's just like underground, and and, <laughs> and and it's like, wait, what? And but yeah. but and and then finally. Uh, Tom Hanks just happens to know that Eugene Levy is at this uh, uh, dentist. For whatever reason, he just knew that he was at the dentist. Uh, and so they talk like, oh, you got to help me. I guess I'd like you now. Uh, I, I, you know, you got to help me break her out. John Candy comes. That's when I clap because I was like, <laughs> when is John Candy going to be? Where has he movie? been? Like, where is he? Like, it's been so long. And he yeah, shows right. up. He helps out. Uh, uh, you know, break her, breaking her out, and I was like, yes. Uh, but then it's not funny. They just do like, yeah, yeah, like they're like pretending to be Swedish for for, yeah. the, for that military guy, and they just go, yeah, yeah, and then like there's another military guy that is that is Swedish, and he ta- and he talks to them in Sweden or Swedish, and and they just. John Candy goes like, "What is it in Swedish? Like, I have a twelve-inch penis." Oh yeah, like my dick's twelve inches. Yeah, and uh, like, but but then mm. the weirdest thing happens. He says that in Swedish, and the like, Swedish guy goes, "All right, all go right, on in." Dog. Yeah, bro, and, it's the it's the patriarchy. <laughs> <laughs> I told you. <laughs> We gotta dismantle it, dude. <laughs> I told you, dude. He just pa- he just let guy. him in because he said that his dick was big. <laughs> that was why. And also, how did they get out when they get the mermaid? How'd they get out? But also, like, you didn't answer my question. Come on in. Yeah. <laughs> it's right. like what? Uh, so anyway, yeah, they 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 break her out. Um, John Candy stays for whatever reason, and then the military guys come in, and he's like fishing. The mermaid's not there. Ha ha ha. Once again, I'm on the floor mm-hmm. laughing. Uh, <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, a big chase happens. Big stupid chase. And then um, uh, they, they, Eugene Levy's like, don't worry. I'll help you. Go. I'll distract them. The car, you know, is, is coming towards him. He's like, you know, it looks like he's like trying to stop it. But then he's a fucking coward and runs away and, and rolls into a fucking thing. And then he goes, "Ah, oh, the week I've had." Yeah. Once again, ha, ha, ha. once again, I'm on the floor laughing at yeah. this point, right? I'm on the floor uh-huh. just like hysterically laughing. Yeah. Uh, and then, uh, a char- once again, a character moment or or a or a beat that should have belonged to Eugene Levy belongs to a random guy in a, with a taxi. 
Uh, think about it. Like that should have been the moment Eugene Levy was like distracting them, and like that would have been an interesting like yeah. redemption for him. Mm-hmm. But instead, it, this moment belongs to this random guy with a taxi car. Yeah, and and I'm on the floor at this point, yeah. <laughs> and I my gut is just like my gut is just out. In pain, dude. It's in pain yeah. because I'm laughing so hard. Out. But but then so so the the taxi is in the way, and then they 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 all the military guys push the taxi away right and they they go about their business and that's when i'm i i'm crying Mm -hmm. with laughter that's when i'm clapping (laughs) that's when i know that this this movie is funny standing ovation yeah yeah i'm clapping at this point hunter i'm crying with with joy and laughter uh so um (laughs) i'm already like I'm already telling yeah. everyone everyone should see this splash movie. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but so so they they're they're almost uh, they're almost uh, there. Uh, uh, the, 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 Tom Hanks and the and Madison are trying to get to the ocean. You know, oh, um, you know, they're they're almost on their way. We have to do this now, and so they have to make a choice. And it, and from a story standpoint. It seems like the logical conclusion of this movie is, okay, I have to let you go. You have to go. I can't just leave my brother. I can't just leave my life. You have to go into the water. You have to live your mermaid life. And I have to move on and and let you go. Um, they talk about that for one minute, and then he just jumps in the water with her. And they it doesn't grow a fin... <laughs> He can somehow breathe underwater now. Oh, yeah. uh, I don't know how this happens. I, I feel like maybe they, <laughs> there, was a, there was a deleted scene that we didn't see. Uh, so they, they they swim away. The military, uh, you know, they quit. They're like, ah, oh, forget it. You know, they, they, they escape the military. They're swimming away, and the movie just ends. And they yeah. go to Atlantis? They, they go to they, Atlantis at the end? They swim to this city that is very close. Anybody could find it, actually. <laughs> It's in New York, I guess. Yeah, it is. Definitely. Also, they, they, so they're, they, they jump into the water in the ocean near New York, and there's coral reefs, and there's, like, a bunch of, like, exotic fish there? That's so funny. I didn't even think about that. I did, I will say, I did enjoy the ending because it was, like, so out of this world. You know, I, I did like that, but again... Wait, I mean, like, like, like the them swimming, you mean, or...? Like, yeah, and then all of a sudden he becomes... Because, like, you see, like, before they pan to the city, like, him start to swim like a mermaid. Um, but I would have liked it more if they explained it. Like, not explained it, but at before she was all like, like, oh, like, you could come with me and, like, we could... I could make you a mermaid. Somewhere in... Be- you know what you know what I mean? Like, yeah, but, like... So somewhere based in reality. It's very confusing. The, the ending yes. confuses me to no end, so... He just leaves his life behind, his brother behind, everything. And John, doesn't, say, and, doesn't say goodbye to John Candy, by the way. And, oh, no, no, no. John Candy's a federal criminal at this point. <laughs> yeah, John Candy's probably do. in jail for the rest of his life. Oh, he stole from the government. He, he stole, stole from the government. He's a dead man. Yeah, and was smoking a cigar. And, and he was like, fishing. Oh, dude, he's he's like uh, uh, he's like Lee Harvey Oswald at this point. He's the man that killed JFK. D- didn't they find him like reading a book? He's like that. Yeah. Us. So John so John Candy is prison. presumably he's presumably in jail for the rest of his life, but you know Tom Hanks just leaves him behind to swim with this mermaid, and uh, at this point I'm like, yeah, I didn't like this movie at all, and I I didn't care for the romance, I didn't care for the story. Um, at every turn, it seemed like they, every, at every turn where it seemed like, oh, this would be a good thematic moment or a story moment or a character moment, you know, where like, okay, this is what the movie's about. The movie then just kind of subverts your expectations and and just kind of ends at the end. Yeah, I mean, again, the same with Stripes. I, I probably won't be watching this movie again, you know? And I, I honestly feel very similar to how I felt with Stripes, like... But, but at I, least I with think... stripes, at least with stripes, I laughed. Like I barely laughed at this movie yeah. or with this movie, and and like at least like I can be like, okay, Bill Murray was fun, Harold Ramis was fun, but like I can't really say that about anyone in this movie besides John Candy. 
Yeah, see, I, I'm the opposite of that. I think I laughed more in this movie than I did in Stripes. Um, okay. And and I, I, excuse me, <clears throat> at least with this movie, like for me, I, I don't know. I felt like it was gonna, it was going somewhere. Whether I liked it or not, it just went somewhere. Whereas Stripes, I was like, uh, where's it going? Nowhere. All right. <laughs> all right cool bill murray and i love bill murray and but it's like all right he dresses up as a military guy and makes jokes you know what i mean and then it's over i'd rather see an aimless movie like that than this aimless movie because at least like i mean yeah this is supposed to be funny too but like the, you're supposed to care about the characters in this movie at least you could argue in stripes you're not really supposed to I guess you're right. I guess that that right there is a very good argument. But I will make the counter argument, which I don't know if it's a good one or not. But I think I did care about Tom Hanks's character. Uh, okay. And, and my my reasoning for that is the scene where they're ice skating and he's looking at this old cup, this old couple that looked like they've been together for years or whatever. That scene made me like feel really bad for him. And that's that's my only I think uh, like. I, I can't think of the word. Yeah, that, that, that was like an emotional kind of moment yes. for you. That, that was a moment that made you feel things. Yes. And, that, and speaking I think that of was... moments, sorry, and, and speaking of moments that made me feel things, I think the, the one moment that, once again, I wasn't like tearing up or anything at this moment, yeah. but, but the one moment I was like, ooh, okay, that, that was kind of uh, a, a good moment and uh, it made me like feel a little bit like, oh, that was kind of... Uh, a, a moment of pathos for this character is when John Candy has that monologue that I did where, you know, he's like, I will never be happy. Mm -hmm. And and you just kind of sit with that, you know, for, for a moment and, and, and you're like, Oh, that's interesting. Like, like he's this playboy guy. Right. And he's like, you know, he's playing, you know, he's acting like, yeah, like, you know, I don't care about anything. I'm, you know, I, I, I'm very loose. I, you know, I'll, I'll just roll with the punches. I'm that kind of guy. But then he has that monologue where he's like, yeah, I, I'm not happy, though, doing this. I don't actually feel fulfilled doing what I'm doing right now. And that mm -hmm. was an interesting moment. They don't do anything with that. But but it is an interesting, like, oh, okay, like, he has pathos. Like, he's not just, like, happy all the time. Like, he has issues of his own that we never deal with. Yeah, and our version, our remake of Splash would deal with those things. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, we would deal so, with it, guys. So, we're dealing with it. We're dealing with it. We're actually in talks with. Uh, that's why Nick was on the phone with Tom Hanks earlier. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we're actually in talks with him and Disney, trying to get the rights a little bit and funding for our remake of Splash. Yeah, we're gonna. We're, you know, we're trying our damnedest. Uh, you know, we're, we'll get the funding. We'll get the talent. <laughs> Talents right here. Yeah, we actually have the talent. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, we are the talent, baby. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, Splash remake coming 2030. Directed by uh, Taika Waititi. Ho hold uh, on to hold on to your <laughs> your gills. I don't know, dude. Uh, uh -huh. That's the tagline. <laughs> hold on to your gills. Hold on to your gills. Uh, oh, and one, and to kind of wrap up, uh, biggest missed opportunity of the movie is when the movie ends, uh, the, it, it, the movie doesn't say Finn. <laughs> um, all right, with that, Nick, what's your rating? What do you think? <sighs> yeah, I had a rough time. Oh, what? It's going to be harsh, I know. It's going to be harsh. It's a harsh rating. Um, I, yeah, I, uh, I had a rough time with this. I didn't really laugh all that much. I'd be lying if I said I was really enjoying myself while watching this at all. Uh, there's a few decent elements, mainly with John Candy, and maybe some of the visuals were kind of nice, I guess. Um, it didn't, like, offend me to no end, <laughs> like like Garp did, or yeah. anything like that. It, I mean, this movie is kind of offensive to me, but it wasn't, like, egregious like that movie was, kind of. Because, like, I... I gave that movie like a three. I would probably lower it now to maybe like a two, maybe even a one. Uh, the World According to Garb. Uh, just because every time I think about it, it just gets worse in my head. Oh, yeah. Uh, but, but this movie isn't quite as bad, but I do think it's pretty terrible. And like it has one job. Actually, two. It, it has to make me... This movie had to make me care about the romance, and it had to make me laugh. It didn't do 
any of those things. So I have to give this movie like a three out of ten. It, it was pretty bad. I didn't like it. Uh, didn't barely made a, a, an impact on me. Barely made a splash. <laughs> 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 um yeah i don't know it's it, it gets hard especially because uh now that i'm doing letterbox i'm only thinking about it in terms of five so it's it gets hard to do it at a 10 but i think i'd probably have to give it like i don't know because i i did have more fun watching this movie than stripes yeah so you I, clearly liked this more than i did and you liked it more than stripes yeah so i i i, I think i gave stripes like a six but I think I'd have to lower it to like more of a four and probably give this one a, a nice six out of 10, I think. But All right, fair, fair. Yeah, fair. yeah, because I, I enjoyed it a little bit, you know. Uh, yeah, it's a movie and it, and it goes somewhere, I guess, you know. It's a movie. So, that yeah. should be on the poster. <laughs> yeah. Watch 1984 Ron Howard's Splash. It's a movie. <laughs> hold on to your fins hold on to hold your on gills to your hold on Fin. to your gills baby <laughs> uh yeah so that's splash yeah that's splash right. uh you know uh we, we we sure did dive deep into that movie yeah we sure uh i don't know what what other puns could i make uh um <laughs> didn't didn't uh sure did ride that wave we sure rode that um, wave hunter that was a stroke. That was a stroke. That was a stroke. That was well for me. It was <laughs> like a bad stroke. <laughs> that was a fucking. That movie was, that was a stroke a for me. Stroke, dude. Yeah, that was a stroke. Uh, all right. Um. All right. Well, that was splash. Thank you guys for listening to our splash episode. Uh, John Candy. Once again, I did like him in the movie. I just, I he just didn't have that much to do in it. I, yeah. He's barely in it. He's like in what, maybe ten minutes, maybe, maybe. I want to say 10 to 15. 15, yeah. 15 at most, I think. Yeah. That might be generous, though, because he really is not in this movie that much. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I, I guess if I had to compare the performances right now between Splash and Stripes, I, I'd definitely give it to Stripes because he had more to do. Once again, not as much. Like, he still didn't do that much in Stripes, but, like, he did have a few funny scenes that made me laugh pretty hard. And I do like his character in that movie. Um, so I think I have to give it to Stripes, even though I do think he's pretty good in this. But once again, it, it's I, I, I dislike the movie. So I, I think yeah. that's also why I'm, I'm giving it to Stripes a little bit more. So I, I, I would probably give it... Uh, I probably would say Stripes and then this movie right now for, for our John Candy podcast. Yeah, I, I'd probably have to... Um say the same thing actually as oh, okay. i i liked this movie more but as far as john candy's performance like yeah he has a lot more to do in stripes and you really see like he's fully committed and dedicated to it um so yeah yeah same rating or same list right there cool for now well, thank, yeah for thank now. you guys for listening to our splash episode uh our second episode in our john candy miniseries uh, you can check us out anywhere you listen to podcasts. That's right. We're on Spotify. We're on Apple Podcasts. We're anywhere you listen to podcasts, okay? And uh, we are also on YouTube. We have a YouTube channel where you can check out video versions of our episodes. We have a website, nycactorstalkfilm.com. I'm going to be getting a lot of new things this month, my my actories. Yeah, actories. Stay tuned. Hold on to your gills. Hold on to your gills, actories. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, what else? Am I missing anything? Uh, oh, uh, thank you, Joey Dalton, for the amazing artwork that I have not seen yet, but I will be out probably by this episode. So I hope, sure it's, it's... I hope it's. I hope it's good, Joey. <laughs> Joey, it better be good. No, nah, Joey, you're all of the things that I've ever seen you do is like friggin' amazing. So I'm sure that it's gonna be beautiful yeah it's a, it's gonna be a splash it's gonna be a splash hold on to your gills <laughs> oh god oh man we're in the big spl- <laughs> big waves are coming <laughs> yeah but, uh, watch out guys we're in the splash zone whoa <laughs> <laughs> all right thanks for listening guys see you next time where we'll review planes trains and automobiles all right thanks guys take care bye-bye